there's a large part of our genome that's actually not mapped well, and a large area of genetics that's just not done well or mapped out well, and I want to explain to you what that is. Well, a lot of our, we can't sequence your full genome at once. And the cheaper the technology is, usually the less long the sequence we can um, actually sequence. 10, sometimes we can sequence 10, 20, 100, we're getting better. And the price is also rapidly going down. I will put that up at some point. But what happens when we have something that has a lot of repeats, or it's very similar, let's say 80, 80, 80, just repeating 50 times, or if we have something that's just a lot more varied, like D, T, A, C, um, A, T, if we split this into a piece, split A, T, A, T, A, T into pieces, so like this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece, it's a lot harder to figure out where everything goes because everything looks so similar. We could put, and we can actually come up with a couple different arrangements with, um, with it ending or beginning with A or T or slightly off. With this one, it's really hard to come up with alternative arrangements because everything is different, so the overlaps are much more likely to be true with much less data. This means that anywhere there's a lot of sequences that look very similar, repeating, we have a lot less good data. The other place that um, we have a lot less good data is in something in that certain genes can somehow jump around your genome and rearrange themselves. It seems really weird because we think about like you have one sequence of A, T, T, T or something that always stays the same. But no, genes can move around inside your genome. They do this by um, literally having mechanisms that they don't fully understand to cut out the gene and insert it somewhere else, just like a virus can insert DNA in some other ones. And we indeed think some of these are based on dead viruses that insert the genome or actually made from viral, man um, viral me defense mechanisms to take out viruses. Other ones can just copy themselves, insert themselves without removing the other one. The interesting thing about this mechanism is that it's actually very important in that it's important, it's actually how you make antibodies. So you have a group of a couple hundred genes that rearrange themselves to create different antibodies. They all use the same basic parts. Sometimes they put the parts in that they don't use them, sometimes they use them, and sometimes they put them in different orders. So your whole immune system is based on this rearrangement. Some, we got some regulation in your um, genome about this. We think it might be important with causing certain cells to turn into certain other type of cells. Like we, might, we think it might be occurring in liver cells and some other immune cells. But this means that the genome is hard to predict because, okay, again, your genome might not be static, it might be changing. Another thing that might make your genome is, this one we really don't know about how much it occurs. We think it occurs more frequently than we thought it did, but still minority. But, but some people actually have multiple genomes, and that's because early on when they're still an embryo, they might have had, there might have been two embryos that fused together, so instead of having twins, the two ones combined early on and just developed into one person, there might have been a mutation very, 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 very early on. So only part of the um, cells mutate, but so early on that if you mutate the first stem, the first split, then half the, the, half the cells might have that mutation in your body, half might not. We really don't know. Um, there are actually certain disorders that they call mosaic, Versions of it, like Down syndrome, is a mosaic version of Down syndrome, where some of your cells have the Down syndrome cell, some of you have normal ones, and so in, those people tend to be in between normal and having Down syndrome, fully. There's a couple other mosaic disorders. Any disorder, of theoretically genetic disorder, theoretically could be mosaic, it's just less likely. We see it more with um, big chromosome changes because those big chromosome changes sometimes revert 
themselves or sometimes are made early on with replication. So other reasons why this might be useful is the part of the DNA we don't sequence well. I always said it's a poor immunity, but it's high, what's a high repeat sequences are part of a um, lot of immune system things because um, the high repeat means many places that could have disorder could fold onto itself and there's less structure. Um, and the structure there is is more repetitive. And that structure, more repetitive structure, lets it fit more different things together. It tends to be viruses, so they can fit more viruses or other tag things. But more than that, is these highly dis reasons are high hard to sequence and both being repetitive or not, it tends to occur in two places along DNA of the chromosome, at the ends and at the middle where the chromosomes are attached. So in the middle, both places are really important. At the ends is where it determines how long a cell kind of lives. The, when the ends get too short, the cell dies, it's programmed to die. If it gets too short, in some cases, it can lead to rapid aging, it can also lead to cell failure, it can lead to, um, might lead to death of the whole organism. It can also sometimes lead to cancer. Sometimes it can kill a cancer cell before it becomes cancerous, which is why important. it's important, like, it gets too short, it kills itself. But if there's something preventing from killing itself when it gets too short, the cell mutates. These highly repeated reasons at the end, what they do is they actually keep the DNA better together and they fold up on, its, on itself and like keep it more strong mechanically. It's like at the end of a rope tying a knot or braiding it more so it doesn't unravel from the ends. The other thing um, is in the middle, kind of where the two DNAs attach in the chromosome. And that's very, very important for another reason is that determines whether two organisms can mate. They have to be able to attach in that middle section. It's what lines up two chromosomes. So the chromosome half of X, one half of X aligns with half of X, not half of another different types of chromosome. It lines up chromosome X with chromosome X or chromosome X with chromosome Y. And if the lineup goes wrong, that can lead to cancer. And it's one of the most often causes of cancer. It can lead to it also has a huge evolutionary driving force with speciation, everything. So we understand these reasons. It's very important, but it's very hard to do it. And it's also, historically, wasn't as much interesting because these reasons don't make as many proteins. Um, and proteins are what actually starts making your body after DNA. So DNA makes RNA, which is an in-between thing which makes protein. That's a simplified version. Everything is more complicated than that in reality. So that's just a brief overview. Our, our technology is getting so much better at this and so much longer sequences. But beyond that, we're also getting cheaper technology, which cheaper we can possibly go over just like doing more it more times. If we do it 50 times, we can get rid of some of the errors or some of the mistakes we make. If you do a hundred times, more times, there's a limit to running it and how much more accurate. Every extra one is not as worthwhile as a previous one. Um, also, the more data we have, the more we can better just make statistical model guesses. We're also getting better software at doing this stuff because software combines all these sequences together. Um, and other techniques that are getting better. To give you the price, price, how much the price has decreased, it's remarkable over the uh, let's just find it. This probably has it. So um, the cost per human geno genome and this is for an accurate one not for just your off the mill. We have now cheaper, less accurate ones. In the old days, it was a hundred million dollars per genome. That was 2001. In 2020, per human genome, for more accurate, it's less than a thousand dollars. That means in 20 years, the price has gone down by a hundred thousand times. 
and it keeps getting t going down faster and faster if you look at the graph they have now on the screen with a postal link and it's getting so much better there are some stuff that we're gonna have to more advance we now know that dna is not just dna alone there's markers and changes to dna they can have you can have any of the things you can add stuff to it there's different ways of coils and stuff which this technology doesn't do as well and also the coiling parameters and the add-ons might affect how accurate your thing is so better preparation might make it more accurate but yeah it's going down and it's also partly fueled by because now we're doing dna sequencing on lab chips and these lab chips are becoming better and better and better and cheaper and cheaper as computers get better and better well thank you very much for this brief talk about the parts of the genome we can't act do well and how important they are and i forgot to mention that even more those are very important for ancestry testing which is something that i can go on and on but it's not as accurate as you think it is and i hope you found it informative but please if you have any questions at all comments or ideas Leave them in the comment section below. I'll look at over as many as I can. Thank you very much. And please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Goodbye.